crown's head. Oliah presents the crown to him, and he himself put the crown on his head. It used to be Oliah that put the crown on the head of every Obato Benin before Esige. It was part of the capital punishment that was minted on these elders. Thanks for clicking on this channel. Please subscribe to Afo's blog and click on the notification button so that whenever we upload a new video you will be notified. In this video Mr. Inzadua talks about hierarchy in Benin Kingdom and four cardinal chiefs because Benin has always operated on principle of four. Who is more superior, the palace chiefs or the Inigi dukes? He went further to give a chronology and origin of the Inyarsir title. Inyarsir title is the first title to be created by any Oba. He also talks about the Huzama and the creation of Huzama Nibi, Junior Huzama. Please watch the video. Today we have um, a very interesting topic. I think I've talked about it, these two topics. Um, some seven things propped up in some conversations that I had with a couple of our people on the, on a conference call. I felt it is um, important that um, um, I reiterate what I stated before now. Uh, uh, the argument was about hierarchical structure. What is the hierarchical structure uh, of the classes of um, chiefs? The classes of chiefs that we have in Benin Kingdom regarded as um, a high man. A high man means chiefs of the Obar Benin. Then um, amongst these a high man, you now have different groups that make up of these a high men. There you have uh, the town chiefs we regard as uh, a guy who know it. Uh, then you have the Obey chiefs, the ones you refer to as a guy who know it. Um, so under the Ega Onogbe, I think there are subgroups of these um, Ega Onogbe. You have the Iwebo, you have the Wegwa, and then you have the Biwe, and the other substrata group. Uh, the other substrata groups. Uh, yeah. But all of these, um, all of these are referred to as a hymen, a hymen. But all of these classes of chiefs are all regarded as um, a hymen. But, but like I said, you have a guy who know it, which is a, uh, which is classified. I will know him, yeah, I will know him, uh, in which the Yasser is the head of those classes of chiefs. Then you now have a will know me, in which um, one as, as a matter of fact, these issues are not straightforward. It's not. Um, very straightforward issues. I didn't grow up in the palace, but some of the people who grew up in the palace that I've interacted with, um, they have dispute amongst. By, um, it's a known fact. I know a lot of persons might get fringed or get crinked up by what I want to say. That the Uwebo Palace Society, you know, the Ega who is who is now further divided into three, these three subgroups are referred as the Palace Societies. 
because they function from the palace. Their base is in the palace. Unlike Egaunoe, who operates from outside. But these Egaunoe operate from inside, and they are classified as three. You will be work on a bill. All right, but sometimes I heard that the web white people do believe that they have they are the closest to the Oba of Benin and therefore their palace society is higher hierarchically than the Webo. But for what I have read from all books that has been passed down from generation to generation, the Webo are higher than the Webo. Hello? Okay. So, um, like I was saying, the, these are different classes of Igawa um, um, no both um, in all, it is classified as Iwebo, Iwego, and Ibiwe. Uh, but all of these classifications of um, uh, Ikhaimoba, they all have respective functions. Um, but today's topic, we're going to be talking about the hierarchical classifications between these Ikhaimoba and the Enigye and the Ojongwe. We've once had um, these debates before, uh -huh, but we want to, for, for, for the sake of, um, for the sake of clarity, we we'll, um, want to, want to take it again for clarity's sake. So, basically, who are the Ekaim? Basically, who are the Enigye? Basically, who are the Ekaim? And again, who are the Enigye? And after which, we're going to look at who are the John or John Wei? These are different structures we want to look at it. Then, um, like I said, I didn't mention Uzama Niyon because the Uzama Niyon basically, like I've said, they are not Obas chiefs. They are a John. They have their role that they play for Benin Kingdom, irrespective. So, we're going to look at all of this. And after we're done with all of these, we're going to interact. Uh, I want it to be as interacting as possible. Um, I, for, I want it to be as interacting as possible. Then after which, we cannot switch on to the other topic. Uh, a lot of persons have been calling me. I, 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 more I, 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 So, um, there's something I need to get out. And all of that. So we're also going to talk about it, and uh, if care is not thinking, we can um, look at various people who can handle some of this project, but um, either at the group level or at the individual level. These are going to be things that we're going to look at critically. But the first one is to talk about the hierarchical classification of this. Uh, this thing still downloading. So I'll give it time to download. We're going to look at all of this hierarchical classification. So um, if you're here, I want us to invite others to join us so that we can make it as interacting as possible. So I don't want it to be a one-way thing. All right. Um, you can ask questions. You can clear your doubts. You can uh, contribute. Uh, uh, we 
we will now look at, we will argue it. We are going to debate it. It is subject to uh, which you think. I am going to present these issues based on empirical facts that I have. And um, which is subject to debate, like I've said, then uh, at the end of it all, the best uh, person who argues the best is not about, okay, I want to say wins, but this is not about who wins on who, who loses, but this is about let's i want to speak from my own side I, I i believe i've always thought before now i believe that these chiefs some of the chiefs are more powerful than the immediate that that i i, I this is not a debate I, I i i i favor that chiefs are more powerful than the Nigi. I believe so. So, but I'm not saying that I'm correct. I'm not saying that I'm correct. This this is this is about this is our history. This is subject to an authoritative argument. Uh, sort of a debate I will say why I said so why I believe that these chiefs are more powerful citing some historical chronicle citing some events of the past to buttress my point the first point, let's take Iyase for example. You say Iyase Doya. That is the first thing that you say. Iyase Doya. Iyase of Benin Kingdom. That is how you put the argument. Now, let's say. Uh, Let's say uh, okay, uh, I'll be a little bit um, uh, I'll be a little bit um, distracted. I heard that it is forbidden for another man to cross his hand uh, on the other Benin head. Okay, um, true, true, to buttress that your point, let me, before now, before the time of Obaisigi, the Oliya puts the crown, I think I've said this in some forums before, before the time of Obaisigi, the Oliya puts the crown, on the head of every Oba, incoming Oba, before the time of Obaisi. But after the unfortunate rivalry between the Uzamas and Obaisi, a tradition that is reenacted every year during the Uge festival that we regard as Ugi Yon spelled as Ion I R O O N. You know there are two Uge like that. They all happen towards the time of uh, they both happen towards the time of Obaisige. Don't don't also forget Obaisige was a reformer king. A reformer in the sense that it changed a lot of things, positively or negatively. It changed a lot of things. 
So some events that took place, like the likes of Ugie Ion, Ugie Oho, Ugie Mobo, they all happened during the time of Obayashi. But the Ugie Oho is the, it's reenact what transpired between the Benins and the Ida. Remember, during Obayashige, he had two wars. One that he fought directly. A lot of persons are not aware of that history. He fought with the Uzama themselves. The Uzama themselves got prepared, led by Chifolia, got prepared and went to war with Obayashige. That war was fought and they lost that war. It was after that war has been lost that Olia went to connive with the altar of Igala. So when the Benis now took war, that war that the Uzama themselves fought with Obayashige is reenacted as Uginyo. But the one that Olia eventually also now caused between Ida people and the Benin people is reenacted re as Ugyo, the old bed, the bed of prophecy. I guess you people have heard it. So, during after that unfortunate events and episodes that had transpired many years ago, hundreds of years ago, um, Obaesige would have punished them but um, the likes of Olia Edoin and Uwangwe they have immunity to their offices they have immunity to their offices so what Obaesige would have subjected them to death he didn't because of the immunity to their offices. But instead, he stripped off some of their parts and duplicated their function. A result, a resultant effect was the creation of the Uzama Nibye. As a replacement guild or types of a Hamoba that will replace this Uzama Neon should in case in future they not misbehave. So in other words, the function of the Uzama Neon during the coronation of every incoming Oba should in case these sets of Olia a donhen, a zomo eru, a loton, a holo nire, misbehaves in the future. Then, the likes of the Aogiamie, the Ineni Besama, there's one called Ineni Besama, Aogiamie, I've forgotten the names of these seven of them, there are also seven in numbers, should be able to take the function of these kings. So, but another thing that he did, he barred them for ever putting the crown on top, on the heads of succeeding Obas of Benin. He barred them from putting the crown on top of the head of every succeeding Obas of Benin. So a lot of you will not ask, how are the Obas of Benin crowned at um, Sama Pass? The Oba himself puts the crown on his head. Oliya presents the crown to him, and he himself put the crown on his head. It used to be Oliya that put the crown on the head of every Obas of Benin before Esige. It was part of the capital punishment that was meant 
on these elders. So, if by sacredness of the functions of Oliya, they are even bad from putting the crown on top of the other of the head, who is now the president to not fake whatever murder across on top of the head of the other of the men? So, you are supposed to know the tradition. Uh, but anyway, I am here for our So, but I needed to go back to that history so that we can we can understand that very few persons or or the Obokai Eha that can be able to that traditionally are a part to touch the Oba's head. Uh, I think one of them is Ihama no way also. Okay. Sorry, the list of the Usama Nibia uh, The list of the Usama Nibia uh, Ine Niguneo Ihama Niguneo Ugiego Elema Ugiamie Eholo Nibesama And Eholo Nibieduma Obviously a lot of uh, a lot of these titles had existed before the time of Obai um, SG, except Ehol Oni Geduma. All right, these titles had existed. He only coalesced them together and put them and created the Junior Uzama to punish the Senior Uzama. But anyway, uh, I remember what uh, when they were created. I remember what the uh, I remember what uh, Chief Olia I remember what Chief Olia told them. Uh, let me remember this gist, you know. You know how these people used to fight too much for authority. Olia had mocked in any gunel that he shares the same and her other time or where who are you go wa gima my go basi me ya that over him said that all these titles this junior that he be a kaya him on your senior now well who we are over that then because of how powerful they are they are outside the uh the inner beneath mode yeah go back a year they are lots of their own. So because of that, I was, I was, uh, as Dr. Eisenhower was, I put it. Um, Ineni Guneon was so frustrated that he went to dig his own ear to surround himself. There's still a remnant of that ear around Igun areas and all of that. There's still a remnant of that at the back of uh, present day CBN. They say there's still a remnant, a remnant of that ear. That uh, that in any gunel went to dig. So when we need aya, we need aya tease it be be enough be. What of uh, his barbers that cut his hair? I think there should be ordinarily those are traditional functions of the uh, work Huh? Uh -huh. So those are the traditional factions of our mother, who are also enabled to to take such functions, like people dresses the oba, the webway who owns the oba's wardrobe and all of that. So people have those traditional functions, and they are the only people that can. <laughs> There's nothing to be sorry about. A question no any. So, but there are people who does that function. And I think they belongs to the the Wegwai Palace Society of uh, of the Oba Abini that does that. So they are also enabled to do that. So going back to what we were saying, I I I am of the opinion that uh, the chief, some of the chiefs of the Oba Abini are more powerful than the Nigi. The reason why I said using the ESL as a case study is this. 
you say, Iya se do ya. Iya se of Benin Kingdom. So that means his title is bounding on his title is bounding on the entire Benin Kingdom. So he um, in passing is recognized sometimes as a traditional prime minister of the kingdom. Now in the old the four cardinal chiefs of Benin Kingdom Iyase Esogma Esong Osuma These are the four cardinal chiefs of Benin. Remember that all the Benins have we, we have always operated on the principles of four Agada Agada on the principles of four. These four chiefs commands each of the four cardinal points of the world, or better still, they command the four cardinal points of Benin Kingdom. And each of these four respectable chiefs, they also channel Egenede Omedeniya Seya Yegwa. Whether he must go to the palace. A said, Of all the four days, Osuma Day was originally owned by the Oba, but the Oba of Benin bequeathed that day to one of his, the first order of that title called Avan. Because it was Obayawai the first that created the Osuma title. He had a friend, a young lad, probably in his early 20s, that he bequeathed a secret to. He kept that secret. I think I've talked about this story before. Naya Shuma. He kept the secret. For a very long time, and when he now as Prince Ogun, when he became the Obar of Benin, he, he now came to him and said he couldn't even recognize the young man again. But he now said that um, uh, Moya Suma, so the title of Osuma was created, and he was favored, promoted, and favored. He now bequeathed a Doba to him that Osuma now commands a day. For these four cardinal chiefs have each of the four market days of the main kingdom, the four days that makes our calendar week. The four days. So these four days, each of these four cardinal chiefs, they own each of the day. A day he will he will start propitiation from his house as early as six o'clock and go to the palace and end the day and channel until he finishes the prayer no activities in the palace will start and that is the beginning that is the access day or we said this of man the same thing so they had respected days the four uh, days that makes the 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 benin calendar they commanded those days None of them are hereditary. None of the four cardinal chiefs are hereditary. In the first instance, they are very powerful. They are as powerful as the Aegean for the role that they were created for. They are as powerful as the Aegean. The major reason in the instance, in the, in, in the ori originality of it, the major reason they were created was to reduce the influences of this Uzama, you can no longer give hereditary title. You cannot make it hereditary. You cannot make it as a title. It's just that uh, the the Iyase type, the Iyase is a powerful chief. In short, when I was with the 
uh, when we were doing the documentary of um, the six-year coronation anniversary, you, you people should you should wait for that documentary is out. But it's just that um, is a is a is a is a coronation is a coronation anniversary gift that I, I put together for His Royal Majesty. So um, uh, conversation talks are still currently ongoing. So it will be it will be published to the public either tomorrow or next. Uh, I don't want a gift that I'm giving to the Oba Benin. No, nah, people should see it first before him. That's why the only thing we released was a trailer. It's about 40 minutes documentary. So we brought quite a lot of respectable chiefs, dukes, together, some of John Wei and all of that. I also participated in it. So we can actually talk about what achievement uh, in these past six years of BioWire has achieved. So, and some plans that is currently ongoing for the Benin people to, to benefit from. So, to benefit from and all of that. So these, these, um, so during when we were interviewing Chief Sami uh, I remember I told him that of all the assets of Benin, the only asset that has never given any or by any problem is the present asset of Benin. If, if you know Benin history very well, the only asset since the creation of the first asset by, by, by weather in Muse. The only asset that has never given or by any problem. At the point in time, some others decided not to have the assets. Decided not to have the assets. Decided because they were troublemakers. When you talk about likes of assets, assets like Benedict, for example, is a rugged man to the core. If you talk about assets out there, was a rugged man. Those guys were too rugged. Taking it even to recently, the likes of uh, Yase Udao uh, B2, Chifu Tetenegabi's father. That man was very rugged, though. If you, if you know the story, if you know some of the stories about B2, they were rugged. The only Yase that has never given any or by any problem is Sami So, eh, nah, no, eh, nah, when my will give you a problem in what will work. You know, the tremendous respect. He sees the Yase title as a privilege. You know, he he's a man that a lot a lot of people should learn from. He sees the title as a privilege and not as a right. A lot of people, a lot of Benin people. We see that title as a right because the title holds a lot of power, commands a lot of power. So when you have someone, I think that's why most of us are very careful on who they give the asset title to. There are some people that are holding lower title if they were given the asset title. <laughs> Benin Kingdom for for cash fire. But that is why recent others try to look for calm headed people to give the Yase title because it commands so much power. So you cannot equate the Yase title with all due respect to any Enogi. With all due respect. Like I said, I am not saying that what I have said is absolute. I am only saying that contextually, by way of argument, we can argue this. So because um, that argument propped up recently that um, some persons have alluded that the Nigers were the Nigger were more powerful than the Haimoba. So, but I disagree. 
No, other he asses, he asses before him. Some he asses before we are equally very educated. That's it. Oda was very educated. Um, the one before he asked Oda was um, what was his name again? Um, after B two, he had um, Obase. Obase. B two. There's another he asked before the Oda. The Oda before Sanibe. No, 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 no. He has said, you cannot. The A has said, uh, the, this, this is a tricky question, Brett Olotong. Um, saying that the A is more powerful than the A John. Mm. That is a very tricky question. Mm. That is a very tricky question. I'm not for <laughs> for uh, uh, issues of um, future deliberations. I'm not going to answer that question. The only thing I can say they are at par because in the first instance, EASA was created to reduce the power of the Uz Uz Uzama, not Usama. Is a Z. Inyan or Zama, people who makes mockery, people who who are, who who denigrates the Obas authority. You understand? Uh, people who denigrate Obas authority, people who makes mockery of the palace of of the authority of the Oba of Benin. Inyan is Zama. That is why some of them do not agree to be regarded as Uzama because it's it's. It's, it's denigrating to them. Instead, they will prefer to be regarded as a John because of what the word Uzama came from. Uh -huh. So, I'm not going to answer that, but the only answer I have is that Iyase as a title was created to reduce the influence of these Uzamas. To reduce their influence. Because in the old they were very powerful. I've done some. I've done some. Uh, I've stated some fact in the world that when the Obiame administrator, when he wanted to also create a title, the first title that he created was the Olia title. Why is the Olia important? Without the Olia. No king in Benin is crowned or recognized as at of the old. So what the Ogiamian did at that time was to quickly choose one of his sons, I mean a Viana, to choose one of his sons to become an Olia, to also crown one of his sons. Because if you are not accepted by the Olia, it means that the Benin people at that time, I've not accepted you. So, they had functions that was very powerful. So, Obai Wedo, who was also a reformer king, understood that if these people felt us are not plucked, if these people's power are not called, a time will come, they will, um, they will start to avert even the ordinations and words of the ancestors. So he now created titles like the ESS, the Esau man, the one word. But the point is that you cannot create these titles were created to reduce this influence. So mind you, ESS is the first title that was created by any other. In short, ESS is the first title that was created. Minding the fact that the Uzamans or the Ejon has been part of the system of governors right from the very earliest times of the Ogisos. So the first chieftaincy title that was created in Benin Kingdom. So Iyase is older than every other chieftaincy title in Benin Kingdom except the Uzama. 
Okay. So I'm trying to give you a clue, Mr. Bright Oloton. He has is older than every other chieftaincy titles in Benin Kingdom, except the Uzama. Adrian. So, they are not basis. I just feel by argument, there are some respected chiefs that are very powerful. And, um, and a Nogi is restricted to his domain. And Iyase is regarded as the Yase of Benin Kingdom. Ishokma is regarded as the Ishokma of Benin Kingdom. But a Jew or an Enogi is only restricted to his jurisdiction within Benin Kingdom. Within Benin Kingdom. So that becomes the complexity of reach, the complexity of recognition, the complexity of reach, the complexity of recognition gives this a hammer bar far. I want to state another fact. Chief Sanibe himself told me this that a lot of persons is not is not written on the books or papers. By customary right, when the ERSA visits any Enogi, he Agbe Wene Noya Lawa. Because he told me that uh, many years ago, maybe around 15 years ago, when he went to see one of his friends, the Enogi of Ewesi. So when he got there, so he now asked um, why. So that was when the Enogi was now telling him that it is the tradition that when the Yase comes to visit even the Nigi, they must, by tradition, they are compelled to kill the goat. I'm sure that even a lot of Enogi in recent times are not even aware of that tradition. But he told me that some of these traditions that some now overlook, but has always been part of the extant tradition of the Benin people. Um, a lot of stories that the Yase have told me, like the Yase, when the Yase is also the person, Yase has said, why not? Ashuru. There's usually a flute player or shuru that oishu oipu man do ya zo ni oishuru ni ne the oba will know that the yase has come and is the only person that also have that privilege. So these are many more privileges. That is why I said that when you give the yase title to a hot-headed person, because of the power that the yase commands, we can use it to. To, to tear apart the kingdom. So most times, some others of Benin's, for their best reasons, de de decided not to have a access. No, 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 no. There was no Yase at the time of Obayaweka the first. Obayaweka. Um, um, give birth to what's his name again? Uh, uh, the man that gave birth to the daughter that gave birth to a lady. Uh, he said about the name. But by the way, I give birth to uh, what's it? Chobanai. Uh, is the other brother to by him here? Give birth to Princess Emma, the other give birth to Princess Lady. You were wrong by me. So, I mean, after a by worker, his son, his first son was also an Oba. Then his second son also became Oba, a Hemie. Hemie and give birth to a weather. So, a weather chronologically was the fifth Oba of Benin. So, it was the fifth Oba of Benin that introduced. The Yase title, Prince Efabo. 
Wahuan Okwahuan. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Christopher. I, I usually that's not how they used to pronounce it though. But he may I pronounce it anytime I'm with you. I say if I pronounce it, we'll just be laughing. Get, get, get. Oh, he's not the one that we talk. It's just any, any other one. Uh, uh, well, there are no such ordination to say which title is much more powerful. The only thing I can say that there are classes of powerful titles in Benin but they all have their respective functions like I said if you are not doing hierarchical structures of powerful titles if for example now you know when I was talking about the four cardinal chiefs uh, I talked about um, Iyase I talked about Isogma I talked about um, uh, Esong and then I talked about Osuma. You know, after Osuma, the next title we have know is actually the Yoba title. After the Yoba title, you have um, number six. I think Logo said. Logo said the first time. This time I say Sisa. Logo said. Okay, okay. It's time I six. And it's time I six. On Logo say seven. Now, look at these four chiefs. But there are some certain things that they are doing in the palace. Where Uwangwe takes. Uwangwe is not part. They are not Egai Wonoe. He's the head of Egai Wonoe. There are some certain things done in the palace where the Uwangwe takes precedence, even above the year said the Sogman, the Osuma. So, within the cycle of themselves, it is not for public consumption. It is not something we cannot start deliberating. Like I said, the head of Egaiwonoe is Iyase. The head of Egaiwonoe is Uwango. These are different classes of titles in Benin. They all have their respective functions. But when you not try to not equip themselves, all right, uh, they are bound to the problem because there are some certain things that ESA can do that the Uwangwe cannot do. But there are some certain things that even Uwangwe can do. Ine Nibi we can do. Or Oso Idin can do that the ESA cannot do. That the Sogma cannot do. That Osoma cannot do. So they have respective functions within the palace. But when you now stress the classification of all of them, Yase takes precedence of um, you say that you know uh, Okaloto, like the head of all Obas chiefs. Like the head of all Obas chiefs. We do not take them as stretches. But that does not mean that in some certain functions. There are some certain functions now that will be done in the palace where you have an Iowe takes precedence over every other hand. So, they all have their respective functions and duties in a way that they are not conflict, in a way that they are replaceable. Over the years, the kings of Benin discovered that some chiefs can be that powerful, found ways to ensure that there are ways to water down their power. There are ways to water down their power so that the power does not get to their heads too much. So there are checks and balances in the formation of the organizations of Benin Kingdom. That's why I always tell that our organization as a people is close to perfection. 
even their checks and balances. To every administrative progress of Benin Kingdom, their checks and balances. So the other time, I remember when I did a live video, I talked about that the power of the upper Benin is not aristocratic. So the upper Benin words is law. But most sometimes it is subject to the approval of his hymen, checks and balances. So he doesn't, he cannot, there are some decisions that he alone cannot take. Mm -hmm. There are some decisions he alone, there are some decisions he alone cannot take. Argue that one with you. You are from Oloton. Cannot argue that one from you. That bro, you know the Uzama Ejion crown their own chiefs in their domain. I haven't read about that though. So, even no one my So I don't, I don't know about that. Would that be? I'm a friend of the President Olia Obinin, but I think me and him, we have never had that kind of conversation. Too. But all I know is that they had their respective domains. They had, like I said, when Obaisigi created, when Obaisigi created the, when Obaisigi created the Uzama Nibye, Olia was seen laughing at some of those members of the Uzama Nibye, telling them that, oh boy, <laughs> you want to use yourself to compare me, Olia. You went you the drag, follow up about being the drag, yeah. You did my own. They had their own respective domains. I hope no one will be. Olia, no one is local. Ezomo, no you know, like that, like that, like that. Oloton is a is security. Security, yes. Oloton is a security. Then Eholo. Uh, I know he propitiates over the Ire, Ire shrine, but he has also his own domain. No big okay. But I don't know whether they have Osula. So, I don't also know whether they have their own chiefs. Uh, well, it's a good assignment. I think I will verify. Probably I will just call them Chief Olia tomorrow. So, probably I will just call Chief Olia tomorrow on, on the matter. Whether they can't be able to crown or select their own chiefs. Uh -huh. So I think, um, hierarchically, like I've said, I believe that the chiefs, they have about some of them, not entirely all of them, but we have hundreds and thousands of them, takes precedence over the Nigi. So I don't think that any Enoge is as powerful as the Yasser of Bini. I don't think. I don't think so. And some other respected chiefs like Uwangwe say they say Osui Diine from the Ogbe. Then when you're not talking about from the Owe, the Esogma, Eson Osuma, these four cardinal chiefs. Alright? So I don't I don't think that about these eight or nine or ten of these Haiwaba that any of these dukes have more power than them and because of the functions because of the history behind their title because of the history behind their title uh, in every in the biggest conspiracy theory that I've ever read <laughs> funny enough in every in the biggest conspiracy theory I've ever read in the palace 
the two most prominent people that has appeared in every conspiracy theory in the past is either on one or also Indy. They are usually, in short, uh, what when it not when when it came the story of a Hengoda, Idodia uh, uh, was it Idodia now that um, um, Eric Benedicte Kokure a Hengoda bomb that story a Hengoda did Eric uh, Benedicte who was here said did everything to appease the other. Uh, I think a uh, parable came and I will bag a kwe or so it di kwe you know the, I, I don't know whether we understand this kind of authority that also the also owns in the palace that a bag a kwe or so di kwe it have been on now we feel for you know the other would have agreed to all of those things that um, Ekwenede wanted to use to appease him, but also they say the law is the law, he must, he must die because also he was envious of Ekwenede. So, when you look at all of these things, you now begin to see some of how powerful these chiefs are, and you cannot equate some of these chiefs to some to these to the dukes or these enigi. But I'm not saying that the Nige in their own right are not powerful. But I'm just saying that some of these chiefs are too powerful. That they can influence decision making in the palace that can directly that can directly affect any Duke or any Enogi in Benin Kingdom. So these people, these Chancellors of these ministers of the Obas of Benin, these powerful, about 10 of them, ministers of the Oba of Benin, are so powerful. So I think that's where my own thought of argument is coming from, which is subject to further verifications and which is subject to further debates okay so i think um if there are questions we could take questions then i could just uh, quickly speak on um, um Just quickly speak on. All right, I think um, there are no much to speak about. Uh, we are planning uh, in our next live video. We're going to set up a committee on the um, um, presentation of our imoa. Nana uh, imoa gioba. You know, in our next class, we're going to talk about it. It's going to be the based on of our next topic. And how we're going to go about it, and probably create a, um, I don't know, probably create one or two people to be able to reach out to other people so that we can collectively uh, do. Then I think I'll speak about the spiritual implication of um, doing all of these nana yimo and and all of that. I'll speak, I'll speak a lot about it in our next class, and um, but I think we we'll have to look into creating a committee, we'll creating one or few people. To be able to help handle it, to be able to reach out to other other people, but I'm going to reach out to a couple of other um, uh, social media presenters. Ni ene benero, na we unania yewo, other than saga, other than saga and saga and saga. So uh, I think all of these things I'm going to run around and do them this week because we don't have much time. We're having a lot, a whole lot under the pipeline. That we are preparing for, uh, chiefly.
sorry, I think my gen is about to go off, but it will come on. But what I'm just saying is, um, I will go, man. Epa. Okay, I thought it was my gen. So, we'll look, we'll look critically into all of that and so that we can speak about Vinaya Yemo and Diego and all of that. But have it in mind, it is, it is, I feel that it is not about what you can benefit from the palace, what you can give back to the palace. A lot of people have said that what has the palace done for the Benin people for the past six years of the reign? And that is why we had to put that 40 minutes, about 40 minutes documentary together to tell the Benin people what the palace has achieved in these past six years. So anybody who wishes to know that what the palace has done in these past six years should watch out for that documentary because it is very expository of all the ideas. And um, so I remember I, 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 I spoke I spoke on about a lot a lot of key issues, a lot of key issues ranging from um, creation of the satellite town, Ebuewai, that inspired even the present day state government to create its own satellite town. The proper documentation, it took um, Obaridi almost about um, almost about 20 years before he produced his first historical masterpiece for the Edo people, but it took Obaridi just two years to produce the Benin Red Book. We talked about the, the foundation the Obaiwai Foundation. Um, so some of these things, then um, a lot of derelict structures that has been rebranded and refurbished by Obaiwai. Then the Benin Royal Museum, the return of the Benin artifact, a whole lot of issues, a whole lot of compound, compound specific issues of what Obaiwai has done in the past six years and all of that. It's, it's an expository documentary from different It's, it's an expository documentary that it will it will open up our minds to see some of these achievements. Even when COVID-19 took even two years out of the six years, about two years out of the six years. And um, so that was why the documentary, the documentary was meant to answer some of these questions that uh, <clears throat> it's still... It's, it's, Currently under the pipeline, so professionals are currently handling the kick, the kickstarting of the project. It is even what the state government copied in the name of building a satellite town that uh, some houses, you know, uh, you know. But I don't want to speak. I've been told not to. I don't want to speak about the guy any for now. Uh -huh. I don't want to speak about Obaseke for now. Uh, I don't want to speak about Obaseke. But however. Let's get in the mind that the documentary uh, might hit the public space tomorrow. But when you hit the public space, ensure that you share it. Uh, it's about 38 minutes, about 38 minutes long. All right. Uh, a lot of persons came in. That documentary cost quite a lot from my pockets because um, it was about four days filming. Every day, a day filming was about 160,000 to film for a day because we. We had to use the best instrument, had to use the best instrument to to do that. And thank God that my brother, who is a, who is, who is, who is, who is a, 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 an emerging um, documentary director, Amorigio Sakolo, did it for me for free. Did it for me for free because he completely understands that everything you have to do now uh, has to be what you can do for Benin Kingdom. We, don't, we, we can't wait for Benin Kingdom to do anything for us. The little, that, the little things that we have, we have to give it back to Benin Kingdom. So I reached out to him then. I called, I called Chifu Tetenegi and I was like, hey, Pao, Alpha, I want a unique soundtrack. I want a unique soundtrack. I don't want to go to the internet to pick a soundtrack for this documentary. I want a unique soundtrack for this documentary that specifically is for AY. And he said, okay, uh, I, cannot, I cannot afford it. I didn't pay him 
only pay for the studio section, which was 15,000 naira. I paid for the studio section and he got one or two persons. He did it for free. The only thing I paid for was the studio section and he took one or two other ladies, um, cultural troupe, to accompany him and two, three minutes, um, two, three minutes, um, that masterpiece was created, the soundtrack was created specifically for the documentary. So, um, so, um, yeah, I think that was it. That was it. Um, the only person I, I think I ever talked about because I was just preparing for my dad's burial. So the whole project cost about close to a millionaire. Then uh, one of the chiefs supported with a hundred and fifty thousand. And think that was the only person I even reached out to. So I didn't want to reach out to anybody for that project because I told you the reason the last live video. I couldn't want to reach out to all that person, but however it is, it's the sacrifices we have to make, even if we don't have much. If I have the kind of the money, my, my idea was that I wanted that documentary to hit up, to, to be played on a Rice TV, Chinese television, um, ITV. That's my thought, that that documentary has to go to ITV, has to go to channels, has to go to a Rice TV. Yeah, because it's something, it's something of joy. It's something of joy if we if we can't be able to tell our story we cannot be able to tell what our king has done for this past six years and this is not anybody commissioning anybody this is me waking up one morning and i was like uh, the thought just came to my mind let's let's do something let's 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 do something for this coronation anniversary so i called osakolo who was in lagos and he was like okay we can do this and he was like okay do you have a script I was like, this is what I have in mind. Um, so I put out something to him. I sent him the list of the people we went to interview. We couldn't interview all of them because every day was costing us about 160000 So there wasn't too much money to do that. But eventually it was put through. And we have, we have a documentary we can all look up to. And uh, I'm sure that when you guys see those documentaries, you'll be able to see. So I also interviewed. If you are away, if you didn't even have it, if it ties seven, if it on So that was about it. But um, I'm sure that when the documentary comes out, the only thing I want you all to do is to ensure that you make it viral. Uh -huh. Only if you log on now, I'm not saying anybody should pay for it. It's been, it has already been done. Uh -huh. But because I, I cannot release it now, because uh approval and some self certain issues we are still currently working on it so once that one is cleared up by tomorrow by latest tomorrow maybe 7 a.m on tuesday morning it should be eating up the, the social media space so that people can actually see the work the beautiful work that we did on that documentary so i think that's about all that we have to say for now so i appreciate all of you that um, came out today to join us and sorry I've been very inconsistent lately uh, uh, well, been very inconsistent lately and uh, a lot of uh, issues are propping up and all of that that um, if not because of um, the flooding issue if not because of the flooding issue in the river state are supposed to be in Port Harcourt um, there's a festival going on in Ekbeye that we were invited but because of the flooding issue we couldn't travel yesterday so i was supposed to uh i was one of the guest speaker to speak on uh on some topical issues that has to relate with uh, the um the Akbaya people and the benin people and all of that so but the flood happened it, it has been postponed until the flood clears up and all of that so if that had happened, maybe I would have a boy around five or six me. I would have been too tired to even do a live video. So some of these issues is bothered on Osega on the Massive. So we don't sometimes I don't really have time to come online. But however it is, I see all the great good jobs that you guys are doing for the kingdom. I continue to plead to our people to take the matter of our kingdom, the defense of our kingdom, very seriously. So, and um, 
these are many more that we can talk about and uh, why moving forward we pray for God's guidance intervention and then uh, we should have a strong conviction that we don't have any other kingdom except the new kingdom and we don't have any other king except the over opinion so let's continue to to do all the things that we're currently doing for the good of the kingdom and for the land so uh, uh, uh we say mr omoegi is said hmm, thanks for the patronage we say thanks for the patronage so these are several more that we can always continue to speak about so um, why are we so I think um, next week Sunday or so we'll, uh, we'll speak on the matter of Imoa and um, we'll conclude and we'll be able to set the ball rolling so for those who are already reaching out to me on the project and uh, we should speak more much later or tomorrow when you are available for us to talk so that we can have even a more concretized uh, discussion or conversation on the matter so that we can actually do something that even the elders of the land are no longer doing. So we are the new generation. We must inspire even the older generations to do what is right. What in Opeke, Nivea Duau, and so Christians continue to pay their tithes and offering to their pastors or to their to churches and uh, religious folks. But I as a Benin person, Imoani or Ogedu. So, and that's our sort of titan offering and we pay it to the palace so these are few of the things that we should be very conversant with in going forward why are we so i think i'll see you guys uh, next week sunday we we'll also talk about about talk thanks for watching Please subscribe to this channel and click on the notification button so that whenever we upload a new video you will be notified.